Hi, everybody. It's Mark Russian of markrushin.com. It is Wednesday, April 14th, 2021. And I kind of want to make a video about something that I just recently stumbled upon. It's it's kind of a big thing. And I maybe I'm late to the party, but well, better late to the party than never show up, right? And it is thecreativeindependent.com. And uh, what is the creative independent? Let's 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 get into it here. It's a growing resource of emotional and practical guidance for creative people. Published ad-free by Kickstarter, a public benefit corporation. We produce interviews, wisdom, and guides that illuminate the trials and tribulations of living a creative life, as told by working artists, including writers, musicians, designers, visual artists, and others. Our goal is to feed and grow the community of people who create. And I stumbled upon this recently. I guess I was like, I don't know what I was looking for. I tell you what I've been looking for all these years. I've been looking for a good interview site or a self interview site because I've always, uh, when I used to read magazines and you know, there's hardly any magazines anymore. The thing that I always loved were sort of like self interviews or things that had been edited to a certain extent, not particularly uh, uh, fine tuned or whatever, but anyway, so that's kind of a thing that I've been, I've been having trouble finding on the internet just because you have, you know, you have these media companies and then you have things that are get higher in search rank rankings, whatever search engine you use. And it's, and, and a lot of the, and I, you know, I always talk about how I hate music journalists these days because they write the same crap for all the same different publications and they all have the same angles and it's boring. Right. Or it's they're they're fed something from the industry. And so I hate that just because it's so obvious. And so it's nice to hear self interviews, maybe with a little bit of editing or a, a little Q&A back and forth from the actual artists themselves. And so this site is, as you can see here, uh, uh, rather vast. And I can't even remember how I, it might have been the Mickey Barini uh, interview. Uh, she was in Lush the band. And that's a really good interview. That kind of explains everything. Uh, although that story is well known, but she, there's a little, you know, the rest of the story there. Uh, you know, some of these people uh, I've heard of and others I don't know. And so this is just, uh, I mean, look at this, being able to take a kind of a deep dive here. And I think all this stuff is fairly recent. And so I was like, looking. Looking in here, and what was the one that I saw? Oh, it was William Bazinski, who, you know, I <clears throat> some of my music is within the sphere of kind of the kind of like what he does. I definitely appreciate his work. Um, uh, some of his recent tracks in, in recent years have made my, uh, you know, I, it's not really a best of, but like my, my favorite listening of certain years or whatever. He's he's always releasing tracks, and I I always like them. Anyway, this one's really good. So this was this was the one that really kind of uh, inspired me to make this video because I'm just like I I'd, I'd read the Mickey interview and that was good. I think I'd read something else too prior to that. I can't remember what it was off the top of my head, but then I read this one and this was just like semi. I got to read everything on this website, right? Because uh, he's, he's, of course, super interesting, and it's great to hear, to, to read his voice and the way that he sort of talks and, and talks about, you know, the, the process and, you know, <laughs> so, some of the ways that, that he works or, you know, just uh, buying tape machines and they break and they've got thousands of cassettes. And I just, I just love reading stuff like that and uh, his angle and, you know, yeah, we're in. We're in whatever San Francisco, then we're in New York, then we're in LA. But really, the best part, I think, of the interview was right at the end here. And it said, What advice would you give to artists trying to make art during these very turbulent times who might feel stuck or uninspired? And it, of course, it's super simple, but it's great. Just do it. Show up for work. You never know what can happen. And record, record, record. One time in the summer of 2001, I was about to be evicted from my loft and had no money. My shop had closed a few months earlier and there were no jobs and no work. It was a beautiful summer day and I sat in the sun in my bedroom on this couch and pulled out the, the Way of Zen book and started reading it. 
And it was like, dumbass, use this time you have. Get back into the studio and go back to archiving those loops. And guess what happened? The disintegration loops happened over a two-day period. So you never know what can happen if you show up for work. That's, that's yes. I love that. That's, that's how I operate. Just record, record, record. Making stuff all the time. You know? I know a lot of I know with a lot of musicians out there, they will uh, they'll get hung up on something or or whatever, and you just have to you know it's like that Eno quote that I have. It doesn't do anything sitting on a shelf. You have to release it out there, and uh, you know that was sort of the I, I read that one I guess about five or six years ago, and that that kind of got me into the uh, hype <laughs> hyper hyperspace. It got me into hyperspace with regard to being a recording artist and and releasing stuff all the time of course the modern day being able to independently release stuff and streaming services and everything like that totally love the freedom that that gives me right and i'm able to take advantage of that but i but again a lot of people out there they need uh they need to uh you know be pulled and dragged into the modern era and kind of explained how things work today uh, otherwise, you know, they never get around to doing stuff. They never get around to releasing stuff. They have all sorts of excuses. So I love reading stuff like the rest of the interview is fantastic too. So anyway, <laughs> maybe there's somebody on here that you might, uh, you might know of, and you might be interested in reading uh, one of the, and I love just, I love the style of this uh, website here. Cause if you go, yeah, you go in here and you've got You've got over here, you've got, uh, you know, uh, sort of uh, topics here and from a conversation. When was it? And you can download it as a PDF. So if I wanted to print it off and read it, uh, <laughs> yeah, right? That's what I miss about, that's what I miss about publications and magazines and stuff like that is you can't, you can't read this and kind of just have it sitting around. That's the, that's the, that's one of the downsides I have with regard to the internet and then of course stuff being buried, not being able to find it or whatever. So it's nice to find these sorts of things. As you can see here, I made a, a wholly separate, <laughs> a bookmark for it outside of my usual tons of bookmarks. So I wanted to have that up there. That's something that I'm just going to go to every morning or in the late in the evening and just sort of read up, uh, read, read one thing, right. And then get back to work, get back to work, right. I'm going to get back to work. Day jobs, so they're waiting for me. I'm just on a lunch break. Anyway, it's Mark Rushton of markrushton.com. There will be a link to thecreativeindependent.com in the description of this video here, and uh, we'll talk to you later.